Another great question that we had was, how do you make adaptations which are necessary in the environment that you're in, whether you're a coach or an athlete, even during stressful times? And this is really the hallmark of successful people in general. And the question that I answered previously was, how long can someone make an adaptation for? And we were talking about the fact that if it's a significant adaptation, it's going to come at an energy cost. Now, most people can make quite large adaptations for short periods of time. Now, what's a short period of time? Well, it could be the, the, the space of a game. You know, it could be the space of a practice session. It could be just five or ten minutes. You know, the reality is, is once again, it's related to your level of energy and how well you are um, successfully staying composed. And so one of the things we will talk about a lot in terms of being successful in any endeavour is the degree to which you can retain your level of composure when you're under pressure. Now, Whenever I talk about this, I always like to refer to some of the experiences that I had when I was doing some work with the US Olympic team, rowing team. And in San Diego, they had a relationship with the Navy SEALs. And we were fortunate enough to spend some time with the SEALs. And one of the things they spoke about was how they retain their mental toughness and how they become more mentally tough. And one of the aspects of mental toughness was your ability to manage your stress, your emotions, and stay composed under pressure. And they just framed that up as stress management. Because what we know about people that become very stressed, you know, their ability to think logically and rationally becomes significantly diminished. And for, from a DISC perspective, most people revert back to their natural style. Now, what that means is that if you're in a situation where you must be making adaptations and you revert back to your natural style, well, that's going to have a detrimental impact. Now, 75% of any you know, solution is the awareness that there's actually an issue and that you need to do something different. And so if you as a coach, you know, if you video, videoed yourself and you've seen yourself coaching and you recognize that there are some common patterns which are not helping you, then you start to become aware. The same is for your athletes. If they see some common patterns through your assistance that they're not doing quite so well and it's costing them on the court or the field or whatever the case may be, then they're in a position where they can at least now be aware of it and start to put some plans in place. But actually doing it is the challenge. And, and so therefore we talk about, well, what, what degree can you, can you retain your level of composure under pressure and how do you do that? You know, this is where I think sports psychology is extremely useful. Now, if I go back to the days that I spent rowing, we used to literally do script writing, we used to do visualization exercises, we used to do breathing techniques, we used to practice meditation and the list of activities that we would do to try and manage ourselves and our emotional state better you know, it was continually ongoing. And we, we actually thought that that was as important as any aspect of our physical training. You know, there was an article that I wrote a little while back about the All Blacks, which is the New Zealand Rugby Union team and the World Cup champions. And they see mental skills, if you like, which is a big part of retaining composure, as being the hub of the wheel. It's not a spoke. It is the hub. Nothing happens physically until you've been able to control yourself mentally. And so... You know, doing any sort of visualization exercise, learning how to, you know, diaphragmatically breathe. So that is breathing through your stomach instead of through your chest. You know, breathing through your chest actually promotes the release of adrenaline. Breathing through your stomach is the more sympathetic breathing and it helps you calm down. And so even the SEALs would talk about the fact that stress management, the number one technique you can put into practice is firstly, take a step back to dissociate yourself from the situation and physically remove yourself, even if that means taking one step backwards. Physically, look at it from a different perspective. Take a big picture. Instead of just focusing on the detail, take the big picture perspective of what's going on. Once you've taken that step back, and the reality is, is that we as coaches, we have to make split second decisions. But when you talk about you know, being in the military, these people literally do have to make split second decisions. We're not just their life, but someone else's life is dependent upon that. At worst case, you know, the opposition may score one or two points on us. You know, and so the, the scale of things is completely different. But it holds a lot of weight when you know that this is some of the strategies that they put into practice. So number one, take a step back. Remove yourself from the situation. Number two, take some deep breaths. And slowly release. Then take another deep breath. And slowly release. And be conscious of breathing through your stomach. And slowly out through your nose. And as you breathe out, you may even feel yourself calming down, notice your heart rate starting to decrease, notice the adrenaline in your, in your body starting to subside. And once you know that that started to happen, 
then you're in a position to start actually consciously thinking. Now, if you need to make an adaptation, the chances of you being able to do that are significantly enhanced. And so my best advice is first step back, take a big picture perspective. And number two, take a few deep breaths.